Ya. So, as, as I was saying, this is a long game, right? So many people throw in the towel. But if you know how many times the average person has to be called in order to get a lead, maybe you won't give up, right? Because too many times people call them three, four, or five times, but you don't realize that maybe it might take seven and 12 times to convert or more, right? But way too many people throw in the towel. And it's amazing the amount of data of people that don't actually call. Realtors do not follow up. That is, if you just follow up, you are ahead of your competition. It's amazing the data. I'm sure everybody's seen it. Um, but here, we're just going to go through this real quick. These are numbers um, about uh, when, speed to lead, who to reach out to, how to reach out, what to say, uh, and follow up, okay? So this is really important. Um, how significant would a 100% increase uh, in contact ratios on the value of your leads be to you guys? All right, right. Read, read 100% increase in contact ratios. How, how much effect does 21 times increase in qualification have on overall sales, right? This is the data. If you stick to the data, this is what the data says you can get, right? Um, these are big things, but this is where this comes from. Guys, if you're not right? understanding something, speak up. This is our small yep. group time, so it's easy to ask questions in this kind of So aspect. we're going to talk about that, right? So most of the people are using their phone as the most effective sales tool. And if you're not having all of your clients on your phone, which we talked about before, it's a problem. And the reason why only 41% do it at this time, and this is like two years old data, um, is because people were stuck in CRM. They were stuck in CRM. So um, rep, looking at all of the sales reps, at least six times before throwing in the towel. Shockingly, 30% of leads in the study were never contacted at all out of your boomtown leads, stuff like that, different leads. 30% of the leads never even got contacted by the realtors that were paying for them, right? So, so I mean, if you just do it, you're in better shape than other people. Um, 66.7% of uh, respondents reported reaching out to over 250 or fewer leads in the past year. Only 15% reached out to 1,000 prospects. This data just tells you that if you are reaching out to more people, you completely set yourself apart, right? That's, you don't have to remember this data, but this data speaks very clearly. I know that sometimes it might seem, oh yeah, of course, if I reach out to more people. No, really, like people aren't doing it. So if you're one of those people, you're gonna get more of the market share, not just more because you did work, right? right. Because people are not doing it. 57.9% um, of respondents asked for fewer than one referral a month. All right, let's be honest here. I haven't, I haven't asked for a referral this year at all. I don't either. I don't yeah. either. Okay, so all we're doing is it's not yeah. first, if you're in that category, it's not abnormal. Mm -hmm. But Obviously. what is the. <laughs> you're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone, right? But what is, what is, what are we driving here, right? What is the point we're driving here? If we can get ourselves out of this category, we've got a really good shot. See, and I think a lot of us are good at asking for the sale, but yeah. a lot of us are not good at asking for the referral. And I think that's where a certain set of words come into play. Yeah. I, yeah. You have to be comfortable with asking for it. 100%, but I also think that we were, again, I'm thinking of, please don't shoot the messenger, but Tony and Zergami, what they do, they ask for the referral in the beginning of the contract, in the middle of the contract, yeah. and after they close. Something so simple of us even just sending a quick text when they're like happy with us right yep. in the beginning, like they're excited, they're picking out their furniture, like that's when you ask for a referral. So it's I did figure out a system of when and how and what that verbiage needs to look like. And that's something that's probably a lot of work. Right? And, and there is a system. Two, like yep. one being written, one being like over the phone, one being in person, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So it's three different 
touch yourself is same right yeah. same yeah. Ask style yeah. yeah and and the way she asks too and i've spent a lot of time with tony's origami in her classes right so i i she's one of the people that i've drawn from from a lot of information because mm -hmm. she's just really good at what she does mm -hmm. um but she asks like this so how are you feeling? Have we done a good enough job so far? Um, have we done a good enough job to earn a referral? Is someone going to say no to that, right? Those are ways to ask that are like kind of make people feel obligated to give you a referral, right? So are you, you know, would you, those things help. Um, there's, an, there's another thing that if uh, somebody would ever dive into it is, uh, NLP, Neuro Linguistic Pro Programming. And that's what, that's what uh, Tony Robbins does to create such a, uh, such a following, right? And a lot of people can employ NLP in sales and really NLP isn't like trickery. It's not like, hey, I wanna get you to do what I want you to do. But NLP sometimes can make sure that you're asking the right questions so that they know what they wanna do, you know? And it's such a great thing. Now, I don't have any NLP classes, but I'm telling you, <laughs> some of the stuff that we use in terminology comes from NLP. Anyway, this is just a really, really important thing to know. Okay, so all I'm saying in this is if you, if you do any lead generation at all or follow up, okay, always, every day is important, but there are days and times to not miss, right? There are days and times to not miss. Wednesdays and Thursdays are traditionally the best days to reach out to people, but that doesn't mean that you don't reach out the rest of the week if you can't, right? It's like every Wednesday, so especially on Thursday. Th <laughs> Thursday is the number one day um, to contact a lead that they're more interested in talking to you, right? So time of day is important. Four to five is the best time to contact a lead. How many people are doing lead gen after they get off work, after people get off work, right? Not too many. Four to six is the best. Four, four, to, five. four to five overall is okay, the best. But if you can, but we also put it in two hour increments, right? If I was to pick times, I would lead gen from 11 to 12 and four to five. I would pick two separate hours of the day and break it up. What did you say for the morning? You would do eleven, 11 to 12. twelve. So think about it. This Thursday we have Legion in here, and I always do, we always send a Legion on Thursdays. But mm -hmm. I do know the four to six is extremely hard for us with kids. So it, it is. It is. Yeah, Don't get me wrong. Simple. It's just if you look at this data, right? So if you can't do four to six, right? Two to three is another time. Eight, eight to nine, nine to ten, time of day. Right. So if you look at these, we're looking for what correlates together. Right. Mm -hmm. well, so two to three is another good time. Well, and the days that we can't, the, the guys on the team and the girls that are on the team that can, we can yeah. set that appointment and we'll go with you. Yeah. You know I mean, yeah. just get them hooked and we'll follow up in the next day if we need to, but mm -hmm. figure out the time for us to call. Here's the problem with lead generation um, platforms. If you aren't on the phone like a, uh, uh, like someone from Bangladesh <laughs> all day long, 24 seven, waiting for that phone to, to call yeah. from one of the lead gens and you don't get it within a certain amount of time, like you've lost that lead, mm -hmm. right? So speed to lead is important. So the idea is I would never get a lead generation that doesn't come with a person answering and warming those up as part of the thing, right? Because there are systems that have like AI that will do that, that will warm it up and set appointments for you. And you can, if you're doing a boom town or one of those other things, you can also pay extra for the service that they are actually reaching out. But someone 24 seven is doing it, right? So paying someone to do that is so important because it's really not a good fit for most realtors to be able to be on the phone 24 seven when we have a life, we have to do other stuff. So the warm up and initial lead calls can be done by um, virtual assistants. They can be done by Boomtown. I would always pay for the service. So this is really just important to say, um, the odds of calling to contact the lead decrease over 10 times in the first hour.
okay? The odds to qualifying them. Now calling means someone's gonna answer the phone. Qualifying means someone's gonna spend time with you, right? So that's six hours, right? So um, the odds of contacting a lead have called in five minutes versus 30 minutes drop a hundred times, <laughs> right? So my point is, it's so hard. That's why most lead generations fail because we're not leveraging someone that can just do that all day. Um, so stay away from the phone between 11 and 2.30, do all your other stuff. Block, block all your other stuff other than lead gen, right? Now, also, if you have to, you make the call, right? I don't, and I don't mean follow-up calls. If someone's expecting a follow-up call, this is for lead generation, mostly cold or lightly warmed phone calls, right? Um, eight to nine and four to five are the best two hours of lead gen in the day. And two to three is, uh, two to three is good, um, a good time and also. So do not miss Wednesday or Thursday ever. And during those times, if you know that those are the peak times, call as many people as you can, right? Um, Let me and, ask you a quick question. Let's yes. say for some reason people can't call in season Thursdays. So the days that those are probably like better to call like follow up leads, would you recommend the other days to call your sphere of influence or past clients? I think that if you can't call, you call anyway. Okay. okay. I mean, you call another time. Yeah. These are just optimal times, right, right. right? It doesn't mean that people don't have success right. on the other days. These are just the most successful times if it fits into your schedule. And if it doesn't, right, we can look at those things. And this will be recorded, so you'll be able to go to those slides, right? Um, so who to reach out to? <laughs> you said it. You said it, right? Business partners. We talked about business partners on last one. So these classes will help build upon each other because we talked about developing a business partner relationship with carpet people, uh, painters, stuff like that, right? So um, database. Your phone is the biggest database. Sync the two. Referrals, internet leads. Ford. Ford just means the content that you can talk to people about, family lack, occupation, recreation, and dreams. Ask for more referrals or frog, right? They have two great goals. So ask for more referrals, add to the database. We often make calls, but the calls aren't designed to add people to the database, right? The goal of having an amazing storefront like this is to add people to your database that are walking by for free. And Brandon can attest to it. We've added we've added people to your database. Okay. A good amount. So and and have you had success with that method since yeah. uh, right? like doing it and everything on your own? There's yeah. been times where like I do get a little nervous being out there, so I kind of like step in. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Do you stand out there now? Yeah, Tony. Tony could do it. If you ever need help with that, Tony knows. Like, like <laughs> it is amazing. We stood out there, and it's not even. He he always says, "Don't try to get something out of it. Try to make a friend." Yeah. And not even just trying to get a client, because if you can't get along with them, then you don't want to work. With your them. job, your job is to meet people that might know people or themselves need to buy real estate. But the meet people is the most important thing. And you then have to get them to know, like, and trust you before you go for the, their baby and want to hold their baby, which is their house, right? I mean, imagine walking up to someone in the shopping line and saying, can I hold your baby? And they'd be like, no, it's the same thing yeah. as selling their house, right? So now if you had spent time with them, oh my gosh, baby's so cute. Like it might only take a half an hour or 20 minutes or 10 minutes to talk to someone before you get to hold their baby, right? But it's the same exact thing. Me too, me too. <laughs> and Valentino's all like, you want another one? I'm like, nope. <laughs> Not a chance. That's right. So so the, our goal is to just make friends and chase away the people that don't align with us fast. Oh, okay. right. Like there's people who would be literally looking at the window and they would be out there and Tony would be trying to talk to them and they are just like, <laughs> in the day, like, yeah. over their shoulder, like talking to them. We're not interested. And then like turn away. And then, yeah. So yeah. he's like, 
I didn't ask if you're interested. I just wanted to be your friend. Yeah. And then it yeah. opened them up kind of a little more, yeah. and then they're still kind of like uncomfortable. So <laughs> like, yeah. But we had fun. two. We had two. We had the two people wouldn't turn around. I said, yeah. "So what catches your eye?" They ignored me. I know they heard me. I said, "So what yeah, catches right your right eye?" <laughs> right? And I'm like, "What catches your eye here?" And they finally turn around. They go, "Well, who are you? Do you work here?" I'm like, "I do." And they're like. They're like, well, the, the chocolate across the street catches oh, my yeah. or ca catches my attention, is what I said. I said, oh, yes, it's so good. Did you just try it? He goes, yeah, you should try it. It's just about having a conversation, right? And they didn't want any part of having a conversation at all. So they were backing up, right? The other person that we talked to, like, oh, so you're trying to sell me something? I said, yep, a friendship. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and his body language went from this to this right and that's all you're trying to do right you're out there we complimented someone's blue suit we comp you know and it turned out he was a business or yeah he's a business, business developer, developer business. And all this yeah yeah stuff. you know um you know it's amazing how many people that you'll meet that might actually be of service to you yeah to do something like right. there's a little kid that ran into the office and then tony was like oh you want to buy a house like he wants to buy a house and this lady who's my new client now who Tony and I have been talking to runs and she's like, I want to buy a house. Yeah. And we thought, I thought she was joking. And I was like, <laughs> but oh, she really I'm did. Yeah, yeah. Sure I'm showing yeah. But if we weren't sitting out there doing that, how many opportunities do you miss? Yeah. Because if you're sitting behind the desk here, right, this isn't a place, in my opinion, to do your work unless you have to. This yeah. is a place to come in and you have a desk because someone might need to come in here and yeah, do your exactly. work. But if you're on floor time, get out in front. Get out in front and just walk around, be detached. Don't sit in the front window because people won't come to you. Get out in the hallway and sit there and just comment on, we commented on people's so lunch leftovers. I'm going to ask you a question. Yeah. After we're done with this, do you mind just hanging out and showing us what you guys did for 10 minutes? Yep. Just to show us what happened. So. It was a yeah. lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And it is, just, just have fun. Nice. Yeah. And would you say, would you say that because you told me that floor time was not a happy. Some, yeah, and I was like, honestly, some days I don't feel like showing up, but like we have to, and we're all in for yeah. it because you're just sitting there and it feels like, yeah. <laughs> but it's, yeah, but like it feels it's like a trip, right? I'll Can we the clock and I get there an hour, and I'm like thinking I've been here for like three hours, and I'm like, oh, it's only an hour in. But ever since Tony showed me the new perspective, I feel like I'm. Well, and like I'm here excited for for an hour. Yeah. 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 I've been here for four and hours. I'll tell you too, like, I'm definitely one of those who will come in to sit at a desk to get work done mm -hmm. because I am like all out all day long. And sometimes I find peace coming in here when I'm by myself and mm -hmm. sitting down and getting work done. So I know why I'm leaving that on the table. Well, but, but if you got a floor time position. person, or if it's right. your floor time, maybe we can reschedule the work time. Yeah. You know? I agree with right. you. Yeah. I mean, can we put more hours in a day? I know, I know. Yeah. I, I understand. No, but I mean, it's harder I to, to do a better job of that because guys, I it's hard to be a rainmaker of a team and run a team. I'm gonna tell you how hard it is to be a rainmaker of a team and run a team because you are already so busy and you're trying to pour into the help everyone get up to speed mm -hmm. and it takes time. So she might have a little bit different perspective because she's also got clients coming in already. So, right. which this is great if she can spend some time doing that. Um, but if you just make this floor time fun, <clears throat> even if you go grab some samples from over there and hand them out for the other place, right. like it doesn't matter, right? Yeah. Um, go in and talk to so many different people and ask what great sales are going on. If you know what's going on in the mall and you can just, be a little bit of assistance to people. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. Just pick something. Just find a way. Again, we were talking about leftovers. But it's it's important because you want to work with people who know, like, and trust you. The only way that happens is if you put yourself out there, you align with people as who you are and allow yourself to be you. And if they don't like you, they run great because then it gives you more time for the other people that like you because they're like you right that's so important you know um so make make good impressions obviously some of the stuff is like duh but it's sad that sometimes you have to really put it in your mind that hey 
sometimes I'm in a bleak mood. And if I'm on the phone during that time, I'm not going to make a good impression here, right? We have to find ways either to reschedule that time because we're in a bleak mood or get out of that mood, yeah. you know? And Tony Robbins says, just jump up and down for 60 seconds and your endorphins will change everything, right? Go so, for a walk or go outside in yeah, sunlight. Yeah. There's Listen lots to, of different things you can do that will instantly boost your mood. I'm, I'm going to ask you guys real quick, and I know we're a little bit off topic, but we're not because it's about all of this, all of this, Everything we do, even with data, it's about how are you going to be the best person for the person that you meet, right? So if everybody can real quick close their eyes, and I just want you to think of a time, close your eyes, really do it. I just want you to think, <laughs> think, of, the, think of a time, other than maybe the birth of your kids, think of a time that you were uh, the star, the champion, the most successful time of your life. It was, it could be cheerleading, it could be uh, football, it could be anything, whatever you think about. Is there a time that you took the game when you shot or there was something that you really felt you were in the pinnacle moment of your life so far? Think of that time and is there a music associated or a sound with that time, right? Is there any kind of sound that would remind you of that time? You guys can open your eyes. Not one of my most pinnacle times is when I used to be, I used to run a company called Archangel One and fly around in jet ranger helicopters and jump out and rescue people from offshore races doing 200 miles an hour. We're 120 miles an hour over the water at 10 feet. No doors, no seat belts hanging out of the helicopter. Like that's exciting. That was like, I was at the top. There was only 30 people in the world that did what I did at the time, right? And it's a, it's a big deal. So my sound is, Every time that jet ranger sounds starts up, that jet, uh, that I mean, I can, it's I've got it in my phone. So if I'm feeling down, I can play that, and it reminds me of the best moment of my life. So if you guys can figure out how to attach something like that, it's pretty easy to get out of a funk. But you have to make it a routine, right? And it could be a baby screaming, whatever it is, but, <laughs> but then, you know what I mean? It's like, but typically that's not going to do it, right? You know, so. I have one more question yeah. about like the four times stuff. Yeah. What, so why sometimes tend to get asked like how long I've been doing this or how old I am and yeah. stuff like that just because like I'm. How old are you? 20, and you've been 24. 24. I'm 24. I'm 24. Um, how, how long you been in the business? 24 years. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, when I got accepted by this lady, which she still wants to do business with me, um, I told her a little over a year. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. And you just have an enthusiastic answer for that, okay? okay. There's She's nothing wrong with that, you, you know? Go. So, well, hey, you, you know what? Show. I'm 24 years. I've been doing this for about just over a year and I love it. That's a way to say it too, but you can also be like with my team. But you can always like put on there, yeah. like, be like, my team's been doing this for like 30 years. If you count, yeah. if you count all of our years up, it's yeah. been like a freaking. Well, you can and you can say the great years. thing, the reason why I work here is because I've got such a vast amount of knowledge that support me. You know? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's all you have to do, right? It's so important to be able to just answer who you are. It's okay. Don't be afraid of it because eventually you'll have a lot more than a year. Yeah. Right? So how many transactions have you done so far? Not huh? personally, how many has your team done? Right? No, so no, I'm gonna like, ask you for no, you. I just, no. that's okay. How, so we'll get you there. Right? None yet. None yet. Yeah, there you go. None yet. But don't answer that. Answer the transactions to the team, to the public. I just wanted to know, right? But. If you know how many transactions the team does about a year, that's your answer. Or even the brokerage. Even the brokerage. You know, you know so, so we're just going to go through this real quick, okay? Once, once you have connected, you have five seconds to earn people's trust. They need to know who you are and why should I care. Who you are, why are you calling, why should I care? Right, very, very important thing to do. Um, all right, we're not gonna go through all of this stuff, but here, here are some things. Did I catch you at a bad time? Well, yes, you did. 
If I say, do you mind if I hand someone your information? People start to question, well, maybe I should mind. Hey, I'm going to hand so-and-so your information. They're going to reach out. Mm -hmm. Totally two different ways of saying the same thing. Yeah. And almost nobody bucks on that stuff, right? The more confident you are asking, how are you, correlates with the 3.4 higher, like, how are you? You know, like, wh why? That's care, right? The reason I'm calling. So these are just the, so here's a script, okay? Here, here is what a script is for a new lead. So who are you? Why did you call me? Why do I care? The answer must be in your script or conversation within five to 10 seconds. So, um, hi, I'm Tony Fitzgerald with Academy Mortgage. I saw you on our website and you gave us your info to call you. The market's really great and we are putting people into homes. I would like to ask you some questions to see how I can help you with what you're seeking. Do you have 30 seconds of time, right? If you get a no or, well, let me just ask you this and have one question ready to go. If we, if we found the right home for you, the perfect home for you right now, would you buy it, right? Those are, now these are cold leads, right? These are cold leads. This is again, what you guys don't necessarily have time for. And this is people that are on your website. This is why we should be leveraging services and systems to do this, right? Tony, I'm gonna stop you real quick. Yeah. I will be honest with you. I don't, I don't follow any scripts. I never yeah. have, I, I don't like them. Again, obviously like that everyone's different, right? And it might be because they gave us 175 scripts at Kill up KW and I'm like, wait, which one do we use? How do I say this? If we can figure out like two, maybe four scripts in total yep. that we can maybe manipulate and make more natural as a team. I feel like that'd be super beneficial. And then maybe once everyone feels comfortable with knowing that scripts, we can do role playing. But I don't know if there's a way for us to find like three to four scripts that make, that sound like simply sold. Yep. They have a perfect practice. Oh, I know. Probably with 175 scripts. Well, I know. Mean, you could probably go through and okay. And then well, have you I want you you're, you're right, yeah. because scripting isn't what you should be telling the customer. Right. It's what people who have no idea do to tell the customer. Right. But how did you learn your times tables? With a calculator. <laughs> right? <laughs> four times four, Memorizing. right? Memorizing. Yeah, memory. Rote memory, right? Scripts, I think, get a bad rap because literally people say verbatim, the same exact yeah. thing. Yeah. A script is for you to understand how to formulate your script. And if you can get it into rote memory of knowing that I need to answer these questions in my script, right? This is an example of a script, right? You can change it to yours, but if you know that these are the questions you got to answer to a very cold lead, right? This is so important. You are correct. I don't use scripts either, but my scripts built my foundation of how I can just talk to people, right? I can sense. say something. Uh, I was working with a group at Keller Williams mm -hmm. and the biggest uh, challenge they had was price objection, right? And I, this is, this was so new to me, scripts and role play. I thought it was stupid. Right. I'm like, uh, no, I'm not going to pretend you're so-and-so, but I said, you know what? Let's give it a try. And I started challenging her, but I was really challenging with uh, price objections. And their uh, listing rates really increased because, it, you know, obviously she wasn't saying the same words all the time, right. but it was ingrained in her memory. memory and it just started working. Yeah, I saw saying, the I think, evolution like so well. I think it really was, I really think it's it to do with it, but significantly, yeah. I think it's figuring out. And obviously, like, do we have, I mean, straight up, do I have time to go through 175 scripts to figure out which one's going to work for us? I don't. No, but I do want to split. I took this stuff from one or two. I took this stuff from Grant Cardone from um, Wolf of Wall Street. Gavin and I spent about four, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out what we need to answer, right? And what I mean, think about Grant Cardone, how many times they're calling people. That's all they yeah, do literally. all day long, right? So you can talk to real estate people about it, but they're not always the people that are the best, right? So if we know that we're calling, call, and 
Remember, this is cold calling, which hopefully we do less of and leverage a system. But the idea is we've got to, we've got to answer all these questions. Do they trust you? Do they trust your company? Do I trust the product or service you will deliver? All of those things have to be ingrained in you. You have to know the answers to those. And those should be portrayed during your scripts so that people can gain trust without having to ask, right? Mm -hmm. So these are just planting seeds mm -hmm. and not necessarily you have to remember that one because we're cold calling, right? So hopefully we don't do too much of that. Um, but we do need to know if they're seriously motivated, if they're serious in motivation, what do they want? Why do they want it? Time frame, and if they're capable of doing it. So no matter what you do in your conversations, even if you've got a checklist, right, as opposed to a script, we know that we have to answer these things to, these are the things that if we can answer, they're more most likely to get them to their destination, right? The more yeses we have, the more, right? Um, and a script sounds canned, okay, if everyone uses it. A script is designed, again, for rote memory, right? You make it yours. Um, remember, uh, you want to be candid. You want to be natural, but you want, it to, you, want it, you want to be able to remember what you're asking about. Um, double click on questions. Definitely, if, if, so, if you ask a question, ask a deeper question. The more you ask questions of people, the more they feel that you are interested. Now, we're not just doing this for a tactic to trick somebody into be thinking we're interested in them. We want to be interested. So the way to show we're interested is by asking more questions because we want to respond so much when we're doing it. We want to respond to that question right away. You know, one of the best questions you can ever ask a new client is, have you ever bought a house before? Well, yes, I have. What was that experience like? When was that? Where was that? What did you think about the process? What was your best part of process? If you could have done it differently, what would you do now? Yeah, now I'm you know. Just <laughs> <laughs> right? Now you know, and we can spend time writing that stuff down, but now you know right. how to build yourself to match what they need. Right. So it's almost better to have someone who's been, because you they'll tell you what they want. Right. Now, if you've got someone that's never bought a home, is what types of things would you want in working with a realtor, right? Ask them how they want to be treated, right? How do you want to be communicated? How often, um, you know, those are things. And I think if you've got, if you've got good clients with relationships, they should never be on a drip home. They should never be on a drip from your MLS. They should be handpicked and sent because there's a lot of junk that comes up. And if you get the drip sent to you for them and you see what's on there and you go click, 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 I'm like, they're going to want to see seven properties. What are the best three? Let me send them to them. You know, what are the best five? Right. This helps you guys have more time to actually do your work, but it also is tailored to the client. You know, because the MLS doesn't always see what you see when you're looking at the pictures. The drip is set up as parameters, but, you know, so sometimes you also have to expand those parameters and do your own search, which I'm sure you do, but it's just important. People know when you're on a drip. I had a guy who's one of my buddies. He's sent me a client, been working with him for over a year, and he ended up sending me a contract with a list agent. And you know what he said? I said, well, why didn't you use so-and-so? And I'm like, well, he just sent me a drip. <clears throat> like, I have no obligations to them. And that really solidified to me to make sure that it looks like you're handpicking everything, right? Yeah. Um, Follow-up phone calls until you get them talking. Then a minute of, uh, then a minimum of one call every 30 days when you're prospecting clients, right? If they're hot, keep them on your every day. Drip campaigns are important. Cards and your database, right? So leverage team. So two people driving client to your destination is gonna be much faster, right? 
So I'm not going to worry about these things here. Um, that's just a lot of good data, okay? We're going to go through this pretty quickly. All right, first, real estate is work. It is a real job. It isn't a part-time job. It isn't a job that you just take for flexibility. It's a job that you have to put your hours in. Whether you choose to do them at night or daytime is the flexibility that you have. But the hours still make the same. The, the hours are still the same. So you have to be willing to put in the work. And this discipline will always equal freedom. You will have more free time if you're disciplined in your schedule and you don't, you don't let it get cut negative. These are things to consider putting in your schedule every day, right? You don't have to memorize these. I'll make sure if you here, let me start with this one. Take a picture of that one. Okay. This is how to build a schedule. <clears throat> This is an example of a schedule. It doesn't have to be your schedule. Right? So you guys have, what's your app you guys use? Chime. It's for the Okay. What's it called? Chime. Chime. Mm -hmm. I love to spend time learning that with a it's tech easy. person. Yeah. 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 So it's so important to leverage that technology. If you guys are technology adverse, Make sure that you dive into leveraging your CRM and understanding because when you get hired at any place, they only give you the quick basics of, of a system because you, they don't want to overwhelm you. And then sometimes the people teaching it don't even know all the extent that it does. So go find videos on Chime. Go find all these things to leverage because there might be something that you bring back to the team. This could be an assignment every so often. Hey, go bring something to me new from Chime right, for a team. And if we can leverage our team for education, it's one of the best things we can do, right? So the biggest failure for real estate agents is not lead generation, but lead conversation and follow-up. They make a call, they don't follow up. And here's the time that, here's your timeline for closing leads. Online buyers, you see the percentage of closing times. They're long, your online buyers, which even means some of your Facebook people, you might be putting something out there for a year. Someone caught their eye a year ago and then they reach out. Okay. So just, it's, uh, it's, it's. You literally just said this. Right. Yesterday. So yeah. there is a sprint and a marathon. Okay. The sprint is the time to the lead. Okay. We got a sprint, right? People always say uh, there's a lot of times, oh, this isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. Well, there is a time to sprint, and it's during that okay. first time, you know, the beginning, right? Um, so if someone answers within a minute, this is the chances over 24 hours, right? This is your chances. This is how quickly mm -hmm. your chances diminish. That's why, again, if ever in a lead gen, just have them handle that and warm them up. Uh, text, minute or less, acknowledge inquiry, two to three calls. If you're actually servicing a brand new lead off of some kind of internet thing, yeah. text, email two to three minutes, live call within five minutes, okay? So email market report within 24 hours. I have a question for yeah. you. So when you're talking about lead gen, if you're getting a lead and you have somebody else answer it, doesn't that feel not personal? Like I'm when, talking when, about internet leads, not a lead that's handed one to you. Okay, no, but yeah. internet leads. Like if I'm a client and I fill up something online, right? Uh -huh. And then I'm, I have an accent, nothing against that, but somebody from another country calls me and has an, I have the accent. I'm going to go like, 
why would I work with this agent if they don't even care to call me? That's how I would feel because if I'm giving you a million dollar house to sell, I expect you to be there for me. Do you know what's your take on that? So first, how often that actually happens on an internet lead is very, very, rare. very rare. Very rare because mo I would say ninety percent of your internet leads are total garbage. Okay. So if you get 100 leads a day on your internet leads, you will have no time to actually go for the warm ones. So that's why we leverage that time for people to qualify. Now, I'm not saying that they're from Bangladesh. My point is yeah, whoever, can, whoever can do it fastest, mm -hmm. they have a method of warming them up to mm -hmm. see if they're serious, to get you on the phone with them. But what they're doing is they're getting their they're eliminating all of the tire kickers because you'll have, if, if someone filled out a website, they probably filled out four, right? Mm -hmm. And now you're going up against all the other people too. But I've spent plenty of time cold calling thousands of internet leads and one of them ever panned out. Wow. And that's why I say they stink unless you've got a system in place. Because we would just never have the time to do that, you know? And you're right. If you find that right, that one lead out of the thousand that did it, you might have lost them. You know, you might have. But the chances of getting more of those leads are better when you're warming them up through a cold system. But I would never do that for a lead that's warm, that we know is warm, Absolutely. you know? Right? And, sure. and they're smart enough to know, hey, I'm ready to buy now. Like, there's, there's different questions that they're asking that they're like, hey, this is a hot lead. They put it right in your hands. It's not like they wait a week to get it to you. They know, you know, so, and I'm finding people and, and you know what else is interesting is AI, mm -hmm. you will not know right now if you're talking to an AI or not on a phone call that someone called you. They've made it that realistic. Yeah, to yeah, like yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wow. So, yep. yeah and guess what, AI, AI's feelings doesn't get hurt, <laughs> right? Yeah. And when, and it's crazy, but I, I, I've got, there's uh, something interesting that I've been seeing on Facebook as an ad and they're doing examples of calls. And it's like, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. It's amazing. And it keeps that person on the phone and, and, and convert easy. some, you know, not all the time, okay. but it shows some examples of how it looks and, and looking at it, you can kind of tell, but you can almost not tell because it's sympathizing with you. Oh, I can understand that. Look, can I just ask you another question? Right. And it just, and, and those are the cold, hard killer cold callers that like my son was that when he worked for a when he worked for TQL, which is a logistics company for trucking, and he would have to beat up the trucker to make their price go down, and he would have to talk up the seller to get the margin in between. And they were calling 400 people a day sometimes, 200 people to 400 people a day. Oh, that does right? sound terrible. So when you say, hey, 100, when I said, well, can you it's so funny. It's like, they're only asking you to do a hundred leads a day. <laughs> right. That's so funny. Cause that's his, that's what he likes. Right. So these are just some examples, right. Um, there's all sorts of ways to do it. And, and I have an AI class that I'll teach you guys how to use and leverage AI to help you guys come up with scripts that sound right for you. And again, by script, I mean, in getting something into your rote memory that becomes natural right? For you. So I never liked, I went to bold 12 times. I never liked doing the script back and forth. It doesn't feel comfortable, but doing script practice with individuals is very powerful on objections. Very important, right? Um, so isn't it interesting that texting right now is a 209% higher response than phone or email or Facebook? Okay. It's got a 98% open rate compared to an email or anything else, right? Um, here's another great one. <laughs> if you just text with the video, but if you write down that person's name and send it, guess what they're going to open? We should try to do that. Yep. Yeah. So we so, do send videos, but we don't do that. Hi, Barbara. It's, it's amazing because <laughs> right now, two warm clients are probably going to watch them anyway, but this is great for new leads. 
Okay. Can we just take from all of us and we'll design hello? Like a group? Yeah, like a group. <laughs> I want to say hello and just say yeah. that. It's like an introduction. Yes. Anyway, so that's a 199% lift and click rate to watch videos. <laughs> but it's personal. It's only personal when you do it individually. It's only personal when it's their name on it, not yeah. just hello. Wait, do you have right. to like write it backwards because on the camera? It's yes, like... it depends upon what your camera does. If it okay. flips it or not, you have to test it. But I, I, but, but I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I, I think you can. Just, like, flip the time yeah, and yeah. You'll have to look at that. It depends upon what your camera does, right? People love to see their name. Why? Because they want to be the hero, not you. Oh, yeah. Okay. I knew you were listening to it. I knew, I knew it was coming. I knew it. I you're gonna, knew it. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna test it? You can't try this. <laughs> ah, it works. See, you just yeah. didn't tell you. You're regular. Yeah. But so watch it. Rewatch it. Yeah, rewatch it. Like, take a photo. It should be fine. It should be fine. Good. Yeah. Good. Oh, it is actually good. <laughs> so weird. You just have to turn it. Well, the sad part is we now know Brandon's been sending backwards writing to us. <laughs> so, um, okay, these are lead out sources. Don't need to spend much time with it. Here's our marathon. Take a picture of this because this is a, a good idea of how to reach out to somebody. Okay. Now. If you develop a system and a process and follow it, you will get much better success over your life, right? Um, like you have a, if you've got kids, you got a school routine in the morning, you've got a nighttime routine, you got to do it for your, for your day too. Um, here's the marathon, okay? This is why never to give up, like even at six, seven calls, but here is, here, here is the real thing. Most people, um, 90% higher uh, lead conversion on the sixth call. And most people throw in the towel way sooner. So if they're competing with other realtors and you're the one that knows this, you have a better chance of winning it, okay? 12-month um, email and text campaign, leverage video. Um, also, um, if you can't do buyer consults in person, still do Zoom consult, mm -hmm. right? An in-person consult is way better than a phone consult. Um, keep them engaged by sending interesting things. This happens to be, so I want you to know that all of this info is taken from the country. This is not a, just a local thing. I have a, a group of people that we get together and we develop classes and it's from all over the country, data from the best, what agents are doing that say, hey, this is really working. Um, send text follow-ups. You send an email, hey, just sent you an email every time, right? Until they tell you to stop texting them, you keep sending the text. Twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Gavin. Gavin's like, I don't stop until they tell me at least twice. So <clears throat> this is true, right? So here's here's just things that should be uh that you guys should have in your sending stuff out. Now I want I want to talk about um something that's really powerful that we can do together as a team. And I think that we should figure out two events a year to host with giveaways, like a large giveaway, summertime grill giveaway, where people have to show up to win. They enter, we put it out as a lead generation tool out on Facebook, and we give a grill away. And it's a random giveaway, right? So that's a very important thing for lead generation, but you have to show up to the party and a charity event whatever you guys hold dear figure out how to but it it also has to be a charity people align with okay so yeah. i and for charity <laughs> guys if you're interested so i was the founding president for an organization called sarasota's we can have a piece 
and we build bags for kids that are sleeping on the floor. We just did that for red day. I gave off that because I was working 80 hours a week. So I passed the presidency to somebody else. But if you're ever interested, if Bender Stone will let us build here, it would be amazing marketing for us and for the mall. Yeah. They bring oh, all the tools to us. We build right outside. We're going into fall. So it's not going to be hot. We did it in May at Keller Williams and now we're crying. Um, but if we can do it here, it's it's an amazing charity. I have photos and photos and photos to show. So and what do they do? They they bring the supplies and bring, you just so have we, the, the so, person power to put it together. So when I did with Keller Williams, when I handed the charity, I had forty seven thousand dollars in the bank. So mm -hmm. they had money for wood. Re, um, usually, when you're doing it with a company, the company raises money to buy the lumber. And they bring in the tools and the team to man each station. And we saw, uh, we, we sand, we saw, we cut, we have the bags ready. And then you can go and deliver the bags too, if you want, which is better than- What is it that you're creating? You're creating community. You no, no, no. What is it that you're physically creating? The beds. beds for beds. children that don't have beds. Okay, I just missed that. I missed that. Okay. Beds. That's awesome. Yeah. It's That's really awesome. good. Yeah. And, it, and you can, you know, we can invite the, yeah. and you can invite, if the team is not big enough, we can invite clients to participate mm -hmm. and people love that. So, and at least one or two charities even, right? So that's a fantastic thing. And you do want to have something that people want to physically participate in because- yeah your past clients become your army, okay? If you, your past clients can become the legs and feet and on the committee to do it, right? So when you talk about referrals, right? And I know two, two, I know two local realtors that leverage those two events so well that they never have to prospect. And the reason is, is because they are taking, now they've got, they've been doing it for a while, mm -hmm. but they are using their database and their, their database becomes their army. And the first one, the first event is like, if, if it's show up and do, you know, bidding on things can go to money for the second event. Okay. And if you leverage them together, then it's great. So I didn't mean to spend too much time on that. It's just a great thing to do that you guys, we should think about, right? So ask questions, create rapport. All right, just gonna go through this stuff because we talked about most of it. All right. Um, and your online reviews. Take a picture of this one, it's good. Online reviews are super important. Oh. You go back to topic. Yes, I can. <laughs> All right, so online reviews are super important, okay? That's really, uh, so, I had created two different classes. They both could kind of go hand in hand. I wanted to get through them together because one shows how important the data is, where, the when. None of this makes you develop your script, but it lets you understand what needs to go into what you're talking. Did anyone, anything really stick out in any of this to anybody? Any, any, any pair? I feel, like, I feel like personally, this is just a good refresher in general for my brain. Because yeah. what happens is when you're used to doing this 